This is how you talk to your wrestler after a loss. You don't. You leave them alone. You give them their gear and you let them walk away. Um, there's really nothing to talk about. <clears throat> yeah, the professional athletes, you know, if you miss a free throw, they don't talk about it for 30 minutes. If you strike out in baseball, they don't talk about it. Um, there's nothing to talk about. You know, obviously if there's something they could have done better or differently, you might make a quick mention. Uh, if they're super upset, talk about it 20 minutes from now. Uh, if they're a kid who handles loss as well, you know, you might say, um, you know, you could have stalemated that, that takedown. Uh, you only had five seconds left or you shouldn't have cut him. There was only 12 seconds left and you cut the kid. We had a kid do that today at State. He, he still won, but you know, maybe things like that. But for the most part, you don't say a whole lot, especially if you're an emotional guy, a coach, and uh, you know, or the kids are emotional. Let them walk away. Best thing you can do is, is understand that sometimes you just lose. I had a dad, he would always say, what did, what did my son do wrong? And I would say, nothing. And he said, well, he lost. That doesn't mean he did something wrong. You know, just because I strike out, it doesn't mean I did something wrong. The other guy threw the ball better uh, than he did last time. I, I don't know. Um, you know, we're always trying to look for an answer. And, and as coaches and parents, we're trying to guarantee success. And uh, all we can do is tip the odds and the scale in our favor, inch by inch and ounce by ounce. Um, so uh, the best thing I think to do is simply this. Get a piece of paper, write down your notes. Um, you know, if it's a dual meet or something, uh, you know, tomorrow at practice, if it's a tournament, if you have a way to get to get get a, get them before the match, maybe an hour later, grab them and say, hey, hey hit, hit, hit 30 of these real quick. You know, maybe you're in a, caught on your hip, you need to hip iced out and square your hips. Uh, make them hit 50 of them. But, you know, talking really doesn't do a lot anyway. You know, a, gymnast, a, a gymnastics coach doesn't talk them someone through a gymnastics routine they have to drill it I can't talk you through a underhook throw by you have to hit it you know 600 times so really a lot of times the, 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 the talking them through things it doesn't work anyway um, but by writing down with a piece of paper the number one or two things that that kid can do differently to increase the odds of them winning next time write it down find them at some other point in time later and make them hit 500 over the next week so that they stomp that fire out and it doesn't happen again and sometimes we get mad if the kid wasn't ready and what i say is i didn't get him ready you know uh, you know parents i had a parent today say i could tell that my son wasn't ready by the look in his face and, and i'm like why didn't you grab him you know this is the state tournament you need to grab him take him outside and say hey you don't look like you're ready you're nervous you look like you're nervous ask questions talk him off of the ledge then talk him back up and say okay well yeah you, okay so you have a guy who's fast outside what if you touch a mat you know and you stay down what if you circle to the back leg and you take his um his his his, his power stance away you know and his kid's like oh yeah that that is a good tactic and you maybe go over a few things and now i've basically i've flip-flopped i've taken a kid who was ready who was just basically scared and instead of ignoring it and then being mad when they go out there and and, and don't wrestle well i found out exactly why they're nervous about the match we've given them a game plan for for um you know attacking that you know being nervous is sometimes good having self-doubt is sometimes good you know if i'm not ready for a test i should doubt myself and if i doubt myself and i'm nervous and i ignore it i'm going to get an f but if uh, it's a call to action so the call to action is being doubtful and nervous so i need to grab my notes i need to study for you know nine hours or three hours or on the bus to school or i might need to skip lunch and study for an hour but i'm not nervous anymore sure i may not think i'm going to get a hundred percent but i'm not nervous and scared about the test anymore so there's some random advice I think that a lot of us could follow that we could benefit from and uh, you know just let the kids go find them a little bit later with one or two points talk about it you know drill it 10 20 times right there on the floor if you have to see them in practice and make sure they hit 50 of those every day after practice for the next you know a few practices at minimum if it's a major issue then that may be for a few weeks to really get that that position nailed down and uh, progress along uh, forward but um, you know having a big uh, a big speech and uh, you know a 20 minute screaming session even i've seen some of those to this weekend it's just counterproductive it's really just it's just silly let them walk away deal with it the way i advise and i think you'll have better success